<laughs> this is such a weird thing. <laughs> this comment from Danny I thought was really interesting. It says, an idea to get down to the bottom of magma without getting crispy would be to use falling sand slash manually drop algae to dry up slash push away the magma you are excavating. So Danny must have saw the point when I was having some material drop down here and then we had to uncover the sweepy dock. Well, we might be able to use that technique to actually dig down here through the magma and get to the bottom of our core without exposing our dupes to magma. So let's see if we can make that work today. I started off by trying to put just a few ore droppers right there above the magma. However, as you're displacing the magma, it's going to want to kind of move around and possibly come up. So it quickly became apparent that I needed a setup that has a much larger overhead so that I can deal with the magma as it rises up. All right, you know what? I was thinking about the idea of using conveyor chutes, but then I was like, oh, you know what? We don't really have a way to only move just a little bit of that through the rail. There's a good chance we'd end up moving 20 kilogram blocks, which would be possibly a little bit more wasteful than what we could get away with. So let me go ahead and get rid of that stuff. All right, so there's the arrangement. Hmm, interesting. Now, for the materials that we're going to use here, we're going to use algae. We'll set that to a nice high priority. Make sure that the maximum number here is small. And let's see what happens. Okay. Well, there goes our first bit of algae. Boom, straight into sand, just like so. All right, so this is pretty cool <laughs> until it gets hot. So let's go ahead and disable that real quick. No dupes. No, don't step into the magma. Okay, you're all right. And there goes some sand, just like that. Harold. No! Meep! Priority level, no! All right, cool. A little bit of dirt there. Ooh, see that one got stuck as dirt. Oh, there it goes. What I noticed is that the sand is indeed kind of stacking on top of itself as it falls down. So it's not really building up. Hmm, hmm, <laughs> hmm. So sand is building up there, then it gets crushed, then it drops down. Interesting. So it's not really building up like you would think it would. Let's try changing that to five kilograms each. See, I think part of the problem is that it isn't dropping all the way down to the bottom first. It's actually getting too hot. All right, let's try 10 or 20 kilograms. Actually, that's quite a bit, but it may be that algae is just not the right stuff. I might have to go with dirt. Actually, let's see what happens if we build up some mesh tiles down here, just like that. Okay, so that's sand. That's sand. See, now that's building up as I would expect it to. So let me change that to one real quick. Let's see if we can build up a column. Oh yeah, see that's working. It just needs to touch the bottom first before it actually does all of its phase changing. That was the issue. Interesting. The weird things you learn about this game <laughs> when you start doing odd things like this. All right, so this is working pretty good in that we are supplying to the first three. However, this last one over here is not getting much love. I think that's about as high as I want to go. Let's go ahead and disable that. Bruh, I said disable. <laughs> All right, we can manually mop that now because there's not much magma there. There you go, Ruby. Ha ha. Hmm, still too much liquid there. Aha, but now you can mop it. Nice. All right, so now that we've done this number here, let's see if we can go ahead and build the ladder down into this area. Anyhow, you can see that we were able to dig that out, so that actually worked pretty good. So let's go ahead and deconstruct that layer right there and see what happens with the sand as it falls down. Oh, you see, it got destroyed by the time it fell down to the bottom. Hmm. Here I was thinking this was going to be super simple. <laughs> nope. Not simple at all. All right, so now I'm going to switch all of this to dirt. Since algae melts at 140 some, uh, 125 degrees into dirt and then dirt has to then melt at a much higher temperature into sand, there's a better chance it might actually survive all the way to the bottom. Let's see here. Dirt. <laughs> no, it made it right there. All right, bigger clumps of dirt then. Ooh, 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 it's getting much closer. Hmm, 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 15 kilos of dirt. All right, yep, yeah, yep, yeah. 
But no, then this one gets consumed down here. This is very hungry sand. See, it drops down and then it gets consumed. Hmm. All right, so maybe just delivering by hand here only works well for a little hole. Maybe we gotta take it up a notch and do it automated. All right, so for this test, I'm going to use a conveyor loader. Let's start off with dirt. And the auto sweeper should go ahead and take care of the loading for us and it will ship out. And then it will separate out. Ooh, so we're dropping lots of dirt down there. Come on, build up. <laughs> well, we are building up sand, so it isn't actually, it is actually working. But man, we're going through a lot of dirt to make this happen. Okay, we're up to 700, 800 kilograms of sand. Over a thousand over here, this isn't good. <laughs> how, how much can you put in a single tile? Okay, like 2,000 or so, all right. At some point, it has to start building up, right? Hey, there we go. Now it's starting to build up. Although I do have to admit, it's going through a lot of material. Let's see if we throw in algae into the mix. <laughs> Although, I don't think anybody would actually use algae. Algae is quite useful for oxygen and stuff. But if we can make this work and make it work on something like slime, yeah, I could see that. Because honestly, how many of us actually use slime for just about anything? I mean, you can run it to an algae distiller, but I don't find myself using that piece of equipment all that much. Jeez, if anything, I have too much dirt down here now. All right, let's slow it down. All right, interesting. We're now to a point where the dirt is actually building up like this. Hmm. All right, let's try this again, but now we're going to run with algae. Algae should phase change twice. So maybe this, oh, you see the sand is now dropping down. Mmm. Hmm, interesting. All right, let's try some slime. So if I come on over here and I go to slime and I put down 40,000 kilograms of it right there and we dig it up real quick, that's 20 tons of slime. So let's try to run slime instead of algae. See, that's gonna off gas. We're gonna have a lot of heat up here pretty soon. I'm just wondering if it'll make the rail too hot eventually and we won't be able to actually get it to work. We could run the rail behind tiles if we wanted to, to kind of uh, avoid the off-gassing of the material that's running on the rail. But I honestly wonder if it's needed. <laughs> this is such a weird thing. <laughs> whoa, 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 this one's taking off. Look at it go. Oh, then it all compressed down. Doops, we have a problem. Oh my gosh, are you seeing this? Well, if that isn't crazy, and now it's building up again. What is it about this spot that it likes to do that? Well, this one over here isn't doing the same thing. What? What is your deal, sand? What makes you special? And then it all collapses just like that. Hmm, oh, well, we ran out of slime. All right, here comes in another 20 tons of it. I mean, it would take a lot of slime. All right, well, it managed to build all the way up to here and then get stuck. Actually, you know what? No, it's still building up even higher. We've got dirt up here. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, never mind. Now it cleared out. Doops, you might have to come dig this stuff out. Meep, good luck. All right, so by the time it gets up here, it's like absolute chaos. Hmm. All right, so I think I learned some things here. Let's go ahead and delete this and try again. All right, so I'm going to use Atmo sensors right down here. One, two, three, four of them. And then above that, a little ways up, I'm going to use some conveyor chutes, four of those. And then those rails are going to split out like that and split out just like so. And that'll split out like that. However, one thing I'm going to do here is cover this with insulated tiles, just like that. So if that is above one, then all of those will be open and we can drop things down. And I'm going to try to make it work off of slime because slime is about the only thing that we have in this quantity that is mm, pretty close to useless. We could possibly have that much in dirt if you had a ton of pips or something like that, but I'm not going to assume that you do. All right, so here we go. All right, so we're now, ooh, 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 hang on. We just hit cycle 126. And we have our first runaway sand. What are you gonna do, bud? What are you gonna do? Hmm? Hmm? <gasps> it did turn off! Aha! 
Hey, that one turned off over there. Awesome. You know what? If nothing else, this is kind of a great way to convert things into sand or dirt if you wanted to go that way. Because being able to turn off the conveyor chute, wow, that actually works out really good. Oh! <laughs> Smoke too soon! <laughs> no! Okay, so that's actually worked out pretty good thus far. We just have one small problem. How do we dig this without melting? Oh my gosh, what a weird way to end things. Look at this, go! What is happening here? So I started this whole thing on cycle 122, and here we are in cycle 127. So this has actually happened fairly quickly. I'm wondering if I kind of do this number while all of this is happening, if I can catch some things and actually start to mop stuff up manually. Or what if I leave like a, a relief to this side, like that, and then the magma can flow in there. Maybe that helps. There's gotta be more to this. Because at some point here, we need to have a complete sand column right there, but then we also have to get a ladder in there. But almost just as important, the sand column has to remain once we get to the bottom somehow. All right, I'm going to manually override this side over here for now. Try to add a little bit more to it. All right, that one definitely went up too high. Right up. Ah. <laughs> ah. I know there's automation down here somewhere. All right, so there we have it. I was able to build up one column of sand. Hmm. Hmm. <laughs> All right. So now, let's see if I can build a ladder for this. Come on, Harold, you got it. Uh, what happened over here? <laughs> no, no, this area is getting too hot. All right, here we go. Now the dupes are giving this a try. Building up a fire pole right there and a ladder right there. So far, so good. Hmm, hmm, I don't know about that. Um, I'm seeing magma down here. Oh no, more's leaking in. Somebody's got the horrible job of mopping all this up as we try to dig down into it. Uh, beep. Ah, beep. Okay, well, that didn't work. <laughs> All right, so that unfortunately didn't work out. Hmm. <laughs> all right, so the last attempt didn't really work out all that well. So this time I'm going to try to build tiles like this, focus on building the ones in the middle, and then building the ones on the side, deconstructing the ones in the middle, and then building the two down below it, then the sides, and so on and so forth all the way down. All right, so you can see how this is a nice solid little chunk right there. If I go in and I deconstruct those two tiles, I should automatically be able to kind of build up the rest of that real quick. All right, yeah, this is working much better now. And because we plugged this tile right here, we don't get the magma flowing in. Because last time I tried to build tiles like this, uh, the magma wanted to flow in and it caused problems. Yeah, that works out pretty quick. I like it. I mean, you have to kind of sit here and click all this stuff, but eh, I mean, it's not bad. Go down there, deconstruct that, deconstruct that. And you know what, if you're really kind of on top of your micromanagement here, you could make a decent amount of progress in a cycle. I think I'm down about four tiles just in this cycle alone. Uh-oh, we got a little bit of magma that showed up in there. It snuck in somehow. Oh, there we go, at least it found a, we somehow got rid of it. I think it was forced in through this tile right there. You can only deconstruct the center ones once you've built up the ones on the side, but yeah, this is actually working out Really, quite well. Uh-huh, uh-huh, uh-huh. All right, let's see what happens once we go below where the sand is located. My guess is we're really gonna start to bring in a lot of magma. But if I'm strategic about this, then I know there's some obsidian right there, and I won't have to worry about that spot. Okay, now I know that this one will be clear when I go to deconstruct it, which means I can build down here and now that that's built i can go ahead and deconstruct this one so long as you have one covered tile i think you can get through this so that's really what the sand was allowing us to do there was to kind of always keep one tile covered dun, dun, dun. so now how do you get through this spot see when i kick out a spot there magma is going to want to flow up yes and just like that no oh wait a minute we might be able to manage it. Same with if we get rid of that spot right there because it is next to some obsidian. Okay, so we're able to drop that down. Let's go ahead and build up two spots right there. See if we can force that 
out. No, not what I wanted you to do. Ah, see, it, it wants to flow back up. Ah, I'm starting to lose the battle. <laughs> all right, so when I was initially starting to look at all of this stuff here, I was trying to figure out a pattern that would allow me to dig down like this, or maybe using some doors to, to uh, compress the magma. You can definitely use doors to destroy magma. I don't know, getting down to the bottom of the core, you do end up with a little bit inside of this right here. And if, if you can manage it well enough by going through enough obsidian, you can make it, albeit with some crispy dupes. But the idea of pouring sand down there, that was interesting because it really opened up a, a much greater opportunity to really dig down much further into magma without any sort of obsidian help. So there's definitely something to that strategy there. Hmm. All right, so then if you go down here and we deconstruct all the stuff down that is at the magma level and below, we should actually be able to suck out the liquid that's down here. And we could do that by using a pitcher pump. We should be able to put that right there. That is so long as we are in a vacuum, which we're pretty close, but we're not quite there yet. Except for you can't reach the pitcher pump. Alrighty, fine then. Sweepy dock it is. So that's cool. But then again, we found ourselves right back to the same strategy over here. Hmm. <laughs> Alrighty, so now that I've set one of these up and played around with the idea, what are my thoughts? Well, initially it seemed really, really promising when we were able to build it up using just one kilogram blocks of sand. And that actually did work when it dropped onto a mesh tile and then converted. However, once we really tried to put it to use down here and we started to get down in this area where you can see that there's a, just a ton of magma, 2,400 kilograms. It ended up compressing that sand down and we had to bring in lots and lots of material. At that point it was like well over 20 tons just to build up this one single column right there. Which makes me think that it's really not worth doing. Especially when you consider the fact that you still have to kind of dig down here and build all of these tiles in the first place. Maybe just kind of going with the sweepy dock and then moving that down every two tiles every cycle or so. Might just be an easier way of getting down to the bottom of, the, of your map. So maybe that seems like this whole thing wasn't actually worth it. However, in the pursuit of finding an answer to our question right here, I think we might have found a different solution for possibly creating some sort of sprinkler system for magma over here. So I'm definitely looking into this idea of maybe making a little cooking chamber right here. Uh, not only that, possibly having some sort of method as far as automating stuff that we're bringing into magma in order to boost the amount of magma we have or a cooler temperature one if we wanted to convert slime into dirt. Not that we really have a huge need for that inside of our base, but maybe you do, and maybe it's worth looking into. Hmm, interesting. However, that seems like another experiment for another time. For those of you guys that are curious about what's going on behind the scenes here, I have spent the last couple of weeks recording lots and lots of CAD tutorials, trying to turn this 3D printer that I've made uh, into a CAD training class, and I've made it through about two-thirds of that, or maybe a little bit more than that thus far. I think I have around eight more to go, and then I should hopefully be done with all of that. So I've made a lot of progress in the last month here, so thank you guys so much for your support. I'll see you again next time. Stay awesome, guys. Peace. Brothgar!